fusion rifles. People are mad about fusion rifles. Really mad. They've become incredibly popular lately and have set the crucible on fire, partially thanks to Squidface over here. But which ones are actually the best? Well, let's figure it out. It just so happens that this list starts off with the infamous exotic fusion rifle Bastion. It actually lives in the kinetic slot and it used to be one of the most dominant weapons in the crucible. Bastion charges to fire three spreads of seven slugs in a consistent pattern. It's kind of like a cross between a normal fusion rifle, a pulse rifle, and a shotgun. It got nerfed multiple times and now it's a shell of its former self. The spread of slugs no longer deals enough damage to instantly kill your opponent. They also spread much further apart and with more damage drop off. This makes Bastion a very short range fusion rifle which is just not great these days considering we have much longer reaching and faster charging options on the table. Sadly, the dream of getting three separate kills with a single volley is also dead now unless you have some sort of a damage boost. I'll give Bastion credit for its ease of use and rank it in the C tier, but really we have much better options coming up. Cartesian Coordinate is a rapid fire fusion rifle, meaning it fires 9 bolts and it charges up really quickly. In my eyes, there's one main selling point for the Cartesian Coordinate. It's the only rapid fire fusion in the game to get hip fire grip, and this is a big deal. To understand why, you gotta think about your not so average fusion rifle engagement. Most of the time, you're going to be pre-charging your fusion in safety, but what happens if you're caught out in the middle of the open before starting that pre-charge? What do you do if a shotgunner suddenly appears and is trying to close the distance? Well, you should do two things. First of all, of course, run away, and then ideally kill them. I'm happy to report that hip fire grip on a rapid fire fusion lets you do both things at the same time decently well. When you're hip firing, you don't experience the same movement slowdown penalty compared to when you're aiming down sights. This means that you can backpedal against your opponent pretty effectively. With all the different buffs the hip fire grip has experienced, it actually adds a lot of stability and aim assist, and both of these things dramatically help fusion rifles. You can think of hip fire as the polar opposite to the community favorite perk firmly planted. I'll cover firmly planted later, but basically it gives you a massive ease of use buff with the trade off that you're a bit less mobile for a split second. Hip fire grip actually boosts your ability to land hits without making you slow down at all, but the benefit is not quite as substantial as firmly planted. I really think this is an underrated functionality of the Cartesian coordinate, and I might be slightly biased, but I think hipfire grip on any kind of fusion is a really awesome thing. If you didn't play around with it on the Cartesian, don't worry because we do have some other options coming up later on which are much easier to obtain. We're starting this tier list off strong as the Cartesian lands in the A plus tier. The next entry on our list is one that everyone told me was complete garbage, so naturally I expected to really hate this thing. But I have to be honest, I did better than I expected while testing it for the video. Coriolis Force shoots its bolts in a horizontal volley instead of vertical. If my memory serves me right, well a Guardian in PvP is quite a bit taller than they are wide. Well, most of them anyway. So why would you take a fusion which shoots in the opposite direction? It's kind of like the fusion is in a rotating frame of reference. This is no doubt an odd feature on a fusion rifle which needs to land many bolts to get a one-hit kill. But the upside is that at least the bolts all fire simultaneously instead of one at a time. In a way, it kind of reminds me of a duckbill style shotgun from a game like Battlefield, except of course it has the charge up time of a fusion rifle. The end result is that you can land some really nice kills up close if you're able to time that charge up, but from any reasonable distance getting that one hit kill is going to be much more difficult. I fully expected to rank this in the D tier when I started making this video, but I gotta be honest I actually had a lot of fun using it. Maybe I'm being overly generous, but I'm going to bump it up to the C tier. I really have a lot to say about the Deliverance, and I hope you'll listen because I think the Deliverance is the final piece of the fusion rifle puzzle. It's our first ever legendary fusion rifle in the kinetic slot. This means that it unlocks a huge number of energy weapons just begging to be paired with a fusion rifle. Almost any kind of pulse rifle, scout rifle, or high range hand cannon can pair beautifully with this fusion rifle. And luckily, the Deliverance is awesome in so many ways. Its base stats are off the charts with the only weakness being perhaps the not highest zoom stat. Don't get me wrong here, the zoom is actually higher than default, but some of the other options on this list go a little bit higher with scopes to push it out even further. Still, I wouldn't say that the low zoom is a problem. Bungie recently nerfed the impact of zoom on the effective range of fusion rifles. According to D2 Gunsmith, you're only losing at most about 1 meter, but then again, the Deliverance has the highest base range of any precision frame on this list. Later in the season, we're going to be able to get the Adept variant of the Deliverance with the Adept mod system. That's going to push out our base stats to even crazier levels. Even without consistency perks like the recently nerfed Firmly Planted or Tap the Trigger, Deliverance is consistent enough to compete with the longest reaching fusions on the list. Of course the perk pool includes a lot of options which can help with this too, but I'd like to focus on the most interesting ones. Successful warmup is no doubt an elite perk on any fusion rifle. The multi-kill potential of this perk is just off the charts. Swinging over to the left slot, you can roll Demolitionist alongside any of the damage perks. 
Remember, special weapons give more grenade energy per kill, so this might actually be something you want to look into. Of course, the classic consistency roll would be maximum stability with perpetual motion and tap the trigger. Even the non-adept variant can reach 100 stability with just maxed out stability perks. That permanent 100 stability set will be active even if you're in the air or hit firing deliverance. It's truly a versatile fusion rifle able to participate in almost any engagement situation, and it even dodged all the recent fusion rifle nerfs before it was added to the game. I'll rank its default form in the A plus tier, but the adept variant with the adept mods is definitely good enough to be ranked in the S tier. Next up is Dreambreaker. This is a quick one. It's an adaptive frame, you can focus farm it from the moon, it has kinda bad stats, a low zoom, and a really ugly aesthetic. Fortunately though, its perk pool has firmly planted to do a lot of the heavy lifting. I know firmly planted just got nerfed to be only 50% as effective as before, but the benefits are still huge. I still think it's one of the best perks for fusion rifles. In the right column, the only good perk is high impact reserves, which lets you run accelerated coils and a charge time masterwork without sacrificing consistency. Don't get baited by kickstart here. You'd be guaranteed a 5 bolt kill, but you could also do the same thing with liquid coils or high impact reserves. You might get lucky to 4 bolt the lower resilience guardians, but this is nothing that I'd be relying on. The reduced charge time is nice, but sliding at your enemy is going to put you most likely in a bad situation. The Dreambreaker used to be good because it was deterministically farmable, but nowadays we have so many better options on this list which are also easier to get. I didn't personally love this thing while testing it, but I still did rank Dreambreaker in the A- tier. It has a lot of potential if you manage to get the perfect roll. The Exile's Curse is the former Trials of Osiris high impact fusion rifle which is not currently obtainable. This one, along with its cousins of the same archetype, was a casualty of the high impact frame nerf. These now shoot only 5 bolts, and generally 4 out of the 5 need to be landed to get a kill. If you miss, your opponent is going to survive with just a tiny sliver of health and this happens way too often for me to really recommend these fusions. The charge time on this archetype was also nerfed into Oblivion. You could probably watch all the videos on my YouTube channel before any of these fusions start to fire. I know I might be exaggerating, but it really does feel that slow. With their range spectrum being just barely longer than the alternate archetypes, there's just not many good things about any of these fusions. I guess the adept system on this one is a nice thing, but even the adept charge time mod doesn't help all that much with the abysmally long charge duration. Exile's Curse can actually pull off a 3 bolt kill off spawn with liquid coils and high impact reserves. Conveniently, you could also use slide shot to reload just one bullet at a time and keep your magazine low. This combo does alleviate a lot of the consistency issues, but still, charge time is only getting longer, and I really don't think you should be using the high impact frames right now. It's just way too hard to use for a mediocre reward. We're going to put it in the C tier. Glacioclasm is a fusion rifle from the dawning event, and just like Exile's Curse, it's a high impact frame. What I just said about Exile's Curse also applies to this one. It's just not very good anymore. Its only real saving grace are the perks. Just like Exile's Curse, Glacioclasm can 3 bolt reliably with high impact reserves and slide shot. It can also be a 3 bolt with reservoir burst if you're the kind of guy to hoard all the special ammo. Glacioclasm has slightly better base sets than Exile's Curse, but Exiles can also be adept so I think they're pretty much equal. We're going to put both of these in the C tier. Hollow Words is a precision frame fusion rifle from Season of Arrivals and dare I say it's the biggest tragedy of the entire fusion rifle archetype. Look at that juicy 18 base zoom. With max range, you could also reach a 21 meter damage drop off point. Think about it, a high range fusion in the most favorable archetype. This could have been so great if it weren't for the horrible other stats and perks. Hollow Word stats are way below average and the only good perks are slideways and under pressure. There isn't even anything in that fourth column that's worth using. This one doesn't feel great to use and it's going to go in the C tier. It's really a pity it had so much potential. Iota Draconis from the Season of the Lost is yet another high impact fusion. What should I say about this one? I guess it looks nice? It's in the worst archetype and the only way to get that 3 bolt kill would be high impact reserves. Unfortunately though, there's no perk in the left column like slide shot to guarantee you can always take advantage of this. The final nail in the coffin is the poor base stats. I really disliked this one while I was testing it and I'm going to put it in the D tier. Our next fusion isn't really a fusion, it's Destiny's version of a toaster. Look at this thing, it literally shoots flaming toast at your opponent. It's also one that is impossible for me to pronounce correctly, so we're just going to call it the toaster. This thing one-shots with a very mild aim requirement. Is it busted? Well, not really, because almost any decent player is going to be able to consistently dodge the toast. Unfortunately for the toaster, bread really isn't all that effective as a weapon of guardian destruction. Although I do have to give the toaster credit for its ability to create sunspots on the bottom tree sunbreaker. But then again, do you really need to waste an exotic weapon slot just to get sunspots after a kill when this helmet exists? On the upside, it has some incredible range potential. It's basically the sniper rifle of fusions. 
I'm going to rank the toaster in the B tier. It struggles against better players who will punish you up close, but it can earn some pretty easy and funny kills from downtown. We have a really interesting fusion rifle coming up. You could probably even say it's a little bit suspicious. The likely suspect can be acquired incredibly easily just by crafting your own personal god roll. And man, this fusion puts in some work. Its most attractive feature is the fact that it's a rapid fire frame which rolls with enhanced firmly planted. In fact, Likely Suspect is the first non-sunset rapid fusion with the potential to roll firmly planted at all. Again, even though this perk got nerfed, it's still elite on fusion rifles, and its enhanced version is still by far the best choice in slot 3. As far as we know, firmly planted works while you're sliding too, which can maybe mitigate some of that slide stability penalty. The right column on the Likely Suspect doesn't disappoint either. You can get successful warm up to drop that charge time even lower after a kill and deliver consistent and reliable kills that much faster. This combo just blew me away when I first started testing it. You can do things with this fusion that you would just never dream of with a different one. The incredible charge time of the rapid fire frame paired with the high level of consistency with enhanced firmly planted puts a lot of pressure on your opponents. There's just simply no other rapid fire fusion which can get kills nearly as consistently. So craft yourself a max charge god roll and get to work. This is the fusion worth mastering this season. In my opinion, Likely Suspect is the best fusion rifle in the game as of today and it lands miles above the competition in the S tier. Oh boy, here we go, the main ingredient. So I just said Likely Suspect is the best fusion rifle in the game, so where am I going to put the main ingredient? Where am I going to rank the number one most used energy weapon in Trials of Osiris right now? I'll spare you the weight, we're going to put it in the A plus tier. But wait, you're saying this thing is an S tier? I think the real reason that everyone's using the main ingredient is because our favorite vendor Zur gave out literally perfect rolls for free. This made sure that everyone had access to a very strong fusion rifle with zero farming or RNG requirements. To main ingredients credit, it is very good, which is why I'm going to put it in the A plus tier. It checks all the boxes you'd be looking for. It's a precision frame, it has firmly planted, it has high zoom, but it just doesn't perform quite as well as the cream of the crop. So I don't think I can rank it in the S tier. Deliverance creates some great new build potential, likely suspect charges extremely fast and is very consistent, and some other fusions later on this list do even more impressive things. So main ingredient, despite raining terror in the trials of Osiris, we're going to put you in the A plus tier. Oh Merciless, I'm so sorry for you. The high impact nerf really hit this one hard. In the past, Merciless was one of the most consistent fusions in the game. Now though, it's basically a waste of the exotic slot. It doesn't 3 bolt unless you first get a kill and then reload, and its exotic perk is more or less a non-factor in PvP. It does slightly improve the charge time of your next bolts after landing a hit that doesn't kill, but by the time you charge up 2 blasts with this thing, you're probably already dead. So we're going to put this in the D tier. Null Composure is yet another rapid fire fusion which is really easy to get. This one's a ritual weapon and it comes with a fixed roll. For PvP, I'd argue that you really want to go with Heating Up and Reservoir Burst. I know it might be unlikely that you get enough special ammo to activate this perk, but high impact reserves doesn't add enough damage in PvP to change the bolts to kill requirement for this archetype. You might be disappointed, but honestly, Null Composure is still a pretty decent fusion. I would say it's good, but not great. It can work, but it does have some problems. So I'm going to rank this one in the B tier. It's unfortunately been power crept by many other options which are more consistent and more versatile. Plug 1 is a precision frame that comes with some Nightfall reward. It's gone mostly under the radar in past seasons, but it actually just got a slight perk refresh and it's a good one. Plug 1 can now get the elite perk successful warm up in the right slot. The most natural pairing with this would be heating up. That would give you some extra accuracy on top of the faster charge time from successful warm up. Don't worry too much about the lack of a consistency perk. Plug 1 is yet another fusion which does excellently in terms of base stats and it really doesn't need all that much help. With the Adept system, you can get those stats really high, almost up to the level of Deliverance. Unfortunately, it's not quite there, but it does get pretty close. I have to be honest, while testing this one, I was a bit underwhelmed with how it actually felt in the game. It didn't seem to be nearly as consistent as some of its peers. Still though, it's a pretty good fusion rifle, but maybe not better than the main ingredient rolls that Zer sold. So I'm going to rank it in the A- tier. Snorri is a new Amlon fusion rifle which belongs to the precision frame. If it reminds you of the Arantil, that's a good thing because it might as well become the new Arantil. It just has so many things stacked in its favor. It has good stats, it has the best consistency perk firmly planted, it has the best lethality perk successful warm up, it has the best zoom level of 17, it has the Amalon intrinsic perk, and the scope highlights targets. This can be really helpful for seeing enemies through the fog of dustfield grenades. If you luck out and get this roll, you're going to have one of the most consistent feeling fusion rifles in the game which gets even more lethal after every kill. It feels a lot like the main ingredient except it comes with a second perk which does something completely new and really awesome. This thing is crazy good. 
The only reason you aren't seeing this more often out there is because it's really hard to get. Hopefully someday we'll get a better way to farm these elite world drops. I'm still very scared of the Snowy, and I think you should be too. In my book, it's the second best fusion rifle in the game right now, and it's going straight into the S tier. The Tekion Force is an adaptive fusion rifle from the last Wish Raid. It has okay base stats, a nice aesthetic, and a really small perk pool. Unfortunately, there's not too many good things in that pool. Under Pressure is your only consistency perk, which is decent, but as we know, better options do exist. You might be excited to see the pairing of Rampage and Kill Clip on this fusion, and while it's certainly a fun roll, I don't really think it's all that effective. It's only ever a Kill Clip that's going to land you those 4 bolt kills, and Rampage is basically wasted here. Unfortunately, Kill Clip takes up the same slot as Under Pressure, so you have to make a big sacrifice to run that perk. I feel like the Tachyon Force is just a skeleton of a generic adaptive fusion rifle. It's okay, but not great, so I'm going to rank it in the B tier. Telesto is a fusion rifle which basically breaks everything. Throughout Destiny's history, Telesto was like a bull in a china shop, breaking something in the game every few months. Bungie tried to change Telesto to make sure that no more bugs happen, and they've actually fixed most of them. If you're out of the loop, the Telesto bolts which attach to surfaces are now immune to damage from players. This almost makes them more annoying because now you can't manually remove them. Unfortunately, Bungie also shortened their lifespan, making them self-destruct quite a bit earlier. I've always had a special place in my heart for Telesto the Besto, but with the changes to the special ammo economy these days, it's much harder to use Telesto for the landmine playstyle. The other very attractive feature of Telesto though is that it doesn't get any damage drop off. This means the amount of kills you get is directly related to your aim skill. So if you land those bolts, your opponent is going to die no matter how far away they are. I think Telesto is a great fusion, but it got power crept pretty hard by some of the more consistent and faster charging options. So I'm going to rank it in the A- tier, but with a note that it can be absolutely deadly in the right hands. Timelines Vertex is an Amalon adaptive fusion rifle. This one has access to high zoom scopes and the elite perk combo of firmly planted and elemental capacitor for that crazy stability boost. Back in the day, elemental basically used to be overkill, but now it's actually pretty noticeable with the firmly planted nerf. As you can imagine, Timelines Vertex is one of the most consistent feeling fusion rifles in the game. It's an absolute laser beam. And it's an Amalon fusion too, which almost automatically makes it a good one. I'll rank it in the A plus tier. After all, Snorri can reach a comparable consistency level without giving up successful warm up. But if you still have one of those Zerrolls collecting dust in your vault, definitely give this one a try. Trinary System is an adaptive fusion rifle from Gambit. Basically, that means it doesn't exist for most of us. To be honest, Bungie did introduce a new system for you to get the Trinary System, well, systematically. Though it does involve playing a little bit too much Gambit for my taste. Considering there's 12 perks in either column, the chances of you getting a perfect roll are pretty slim. Still, I'm evaluating the hypothetically perfect roll and there are many hidden gems in those massive 12 perk columns. In the left slot, you have Firmly Planted, Under Pressure, Slide Shot, Surplus, and the most intriguing choice, Hip Fire Grip. You can pair a slide shot with high impact reserves, accelerated coils, and a charge time masterwork to bring that charge time way down. You can keep your magazine low by reloading only with slide shot and maintain the 5 volt potential even though you have a much faster charging fusion. Under pressure is awesome for that extra stability in the lower half of the mag. Surplus also gives you extra stats just for having your abilities charged up. Firmly planted is simply the best consistency perk and hip fire grip as we've established is an awesome choice on fusion rifles. In the right column we also have some really great perks. You have Demolitionist for more grenade focused builds. Tap the Trigger is still great despite the nerf. High impact reserves can make getting that 5 bolt kill more consistent against higher resiliences. And the last perk worth talking about is Wellspring which can get that ability energy on kill. Oof, that was a lot of perks. So where do we rank Trinary? Well in my opinion there's two main roles to look out for. The first one would be Hipfire Grip and Tap the Trigger. We rank the Cartesian coordinate in the A plus tier just for having Hipfire Grip but the combo with Tap the Trigger can make for an incredibly consistent hip firing machine. The other role which I think can be just as exceptional is Slideways and High Impact Reserves with Accelerated Coils and a Charge Time Masterwork. This will make Trinary the fastest charging 5 bolt fusion in the game, which is going to give you the upper hand in almost any fusion versus fusion battle. I think these roles make the Trinary just barely good enough to squeeze it into the S tier. Zealot's Reward is another rapid fire fusion rifle from the Garden of Salvation. It pains me to say it, but it's been badly power crept by the likely suspect. Unfortunately, the perk pool on Zealot's just isn't nearly as good. And the real problem is that it's much harder to get because you have to play the Garden of Salvation raid and get lucky with a drop. While it's definitely a great fusion and a lot of fun to use, I wouldn't advise spending a whole lot of time farming for this one since you can just craft yourself a god roll likely suspect. Despite the power creep, it's still a very solid fusion in its own right, and a lot of fun to use, so I'm going to rank it in the A- tier. I wanted to end this video on a more serious note. I heard a statistic the other day that really shocked me. 
Did you know that in every hour of every day, at least one man is diagnosed with testicular cancer on average? And apparently this is the most common form of cancer for men between the ages of 15 to 35. I've watched a few close friends fight battles with cancer over the past few years and if there's definitely one thing in common is that none of them thought that was ever going to happen to them. Many of you guys have been watching my channel for quite a while now know that Manscaped has been a long-standing sponsor and I really do enjoy their products, but what they're doing this month means a lot to me and I think it can truly change a lot of lives. April is National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month and Manscaped has partnered up with the Testicular Cancer Society to spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. You can visit manscaped.com TCS to learn more about how you can do a self-evaluation for early signs of cancer. Manscaped makes some really great products and they've supported my channel in a big way, especially in some of those months where the views haven't been the greatest, and it really does help me do this for a living. Their Lawnmower 4.0 system is the best trimmer on the market in my eyes, and they have a wide range of men's grooming products that I think you're really going to enjoy. I use many of these things on a daily basis. As always, you can use code PATTYCAKES for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring, and please go get yourself checked. If you've made it to the end of the video, I salute you, because I know it must have been hard to keep calm during all of the fusion rifle madness. But hey, I'm here to show you what Destiny has to offer, and it's up to you to decide if you like it. And if you decide that you like this video, why not drop a like and a sub to the channel? It lets me and my awesome scriptwriter friend Maki know that you want to see more of these kind of videos. And of course, if you want to support making these videos, check out my Patreon. It's linked in the description below, and I want to say a big thanks to everyone who helps make these videos a reality. While you're at it, you might be interested in my most recent video, The Shotgun Tier List. It's the one on the top right of your screen and also linked in the description.